Good afternoon, everyone. A warm bills and welcome to one and all. To those who are visiting for the very first time, a very warm welcome to you. Whatever medium you're using, we welcome you. It is a privilege for us to be here once again, and this is our Holy Sabbath day to give God thanks and praise for all his most bountiful mercies. We are glad that we're here again, and we welcome everyone that joined us. The Apostle Paul in Romans 8 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, swords, Verse 39 goes on to say, nor heights, nor depth, nor any other created things shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, which is in Christ our Lord. God will always find a way. Let us give him all the thanks and all the praise. We will open our service today. Sister Jean, Sister Jean, sorry, um, I think it's worth mentioning that I think we've got Sister Mackenzie here with us today. Um, she's not visible, but I understand we've just had a message to say that she is worshipping with us and it would be the first time she's um, with us. So I think it's perhaps worth just mentioning that. Very welcome, Sister Mackenzie. Nice to have you. We haven't seen you for quite some time. <laughs> We'll open the service this morning, but this afternoon with him number six. <laughs> Scripture reading, please. Okay, and the Bible says, And he said unto Moses, I, thy father in law Jethro, am come unto thee, and thy wife, and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father in law, and did obeisance, and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare, and they came into the tent. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake, and all the travail that had come upon them by the way, and how the Lord had delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done 
to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptian. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord, who hath delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who hath delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, for in the thing wherein thou dealt proudly, he was above them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. And Aaron came and all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses, Moses' father-in-law before God. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood before Moses in the morning until the evening. At this time, we have our prayer. Can just bow our heads, please. Most gracious and glorious Father. Father, we give you thanks and praise that you have woken us up to on this your Sabbath day, that we may come together and fellowship with one another. Father, we haven't done anything good to warrant the fact that you keep us up until now. But because of your mercy and your love towards us, Lord, you spare our life. Thank you, Father God, for all the good things that you have given unto us and you are still blessing us throughout this situation that we are going through. Father, be with those that couldn't join us at this moment. Please give them a portion of your day's blessing and continue to bless and keep them that they may have an enjoyable day. Lord, Father, be with those that are sick. We may not know them all by name, but Lord, you know them. Be with those that are in care institutions. Be with those that are in prison. Lord, just be with those that are going through um, mental problems at this moment, depression, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you may be with them. Continue, Lord, to be with us, Lord, and help us that we may always look to you regardless of what may come our way. Father, thank you for health and strength. Thank you for providing. Thank you for our children. Thank you for that we, may, that we have our church brethren, that we can come and commune with each, each other. Father, help us that whatever we hear from today's sermon, that it may penetrate in our hearts, Lord, and that we may live out according to what your, uh, your sermon is. Father, thank you again. And if there's anything that I have forgotten to ask of thee, Lord, fail not to grant it unto us. For these things I humbly ask in your name. Amen. 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 I'd like to thank Sister Jean for a uh, welcome and Sister Angela for her prayers. At this time, our speaker is Elder James Willock. And I have not heard him speak before, but I know many of you, and from his visitors, they would have heard him already and so it is our privilege to have Elder Willow with us in Bilston today to break the word of God to us and you know from the way he talks he does Bible studies for a meeting we know that he's a man of God and we know that the Lord will be using him and he has used him in the past and currently present. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we'd like to welcome you on the way of the back to, or should I say, back to Bilston, right? You know, you haven't left, you're still here. It's just that you are all over the place, as to put it. You know, but we're very happy to have you with us today. Um, before we hear Elder Willox deliver the word of God, I believe he has got a meditational song. I'm not sure if it's Sister Willock and Company or Brother Willock and Company, but whichever way it goes, both of them, I believe, will be giving us the meditational. After which, the next voice you will hear 
is Aldogoro. Thank you. <laughs> I can take a heart that's broken, make it all over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take a soul that's sincere. Wash it white as the snow, for I know a man who cares. Some call him Savior, the Redeemer of all men. I call Jesus, for he's my dearest friend. Knowing the one can love you, and your life is out of hand. I know a man who can. Upon the water, I am calm the raging sea, but I know a man who can. I can cause blind eyes to open or make the lame to walk again. But I know a man who can. Some call him Savior, the Redeemer of all men. I call him Jesus, for he is my dear. Friend, if you feel that no one loves you and your life is out of hand, oh, I know a man who can. Yes, I know a man who. Yes, uh, pleasant Sabbath to everybody. And I'll just say good afternoon to some and good morning to some um, of a few friends who have come by today. And we pray that as we go through today's worship, that God will speak to us as only he can. Yes, I know a man. I want to speak to us for a few minutes on the topic, Now I Know. Uh, the story is told about a scorpion who wanted to cross the river, but he couldn't swim. So he asks a frog to carry him across. The frog refused. I know what you'll do, said the frog. You'll sting me and I'll, st I'll sink to the bottom and drown. I wouldn't do that, insisted the scorpion. If I did that, then I would drown the same as you. So the frog was convinced 
And they started out. Sure enough, halfway across the river, the scorpion stung the frog. As they headed for the bottom, the frog asked sadly, why did you do that? Now we are both going to die. The scorpion said, I am sorry, but I couldn't help it. It's my nature. Now I know. Let us pray. Father in heaven, this is an awesome task that you have given me to do. I'm not able to do it by myself. So even now I ask that your Holy Spirit will come by here and empower me. Uh, pray that the message that you have given me to speak will touch the minds of the listeners and make a deep impression so that all of us will be drawn closer to you. Take full control. Now I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been 40 years, according to Acts 7 and verse 30, since Moses had run away from Egypt. He'd gotten married, had two sons, and had been a shepherd all this while. He had to unlearn the ways of Egypt. The signs of the time, 733, and I quote says, you have many things to learn and much to unlearn. You will have to sit at the feet of the great teacher and learn of him concerning themes that are higher and nobler than the themes which now engage your attention, end of quote. Just as when we come to Jesus, there are many, many things that we will have to unlearn. And Moses did very well in unlearning so much that God appeared to him to send him back to Egypt to bring those who were still held there as captives. Exodus 4 and verse 18 tells us, And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and returned, that I may return unto my brethren that are in Egypt, and see whether they yet be alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Earlier we are told that Moses had sent his wife Zipporah and his two sons back to Jethro, who had taken them in. He sent them to their family, he sent his family back to their father and grandfather and headed to Egypt on God's errand. We all know what took place in Egypt. And when Moses got there, but I want to draw your attention to something that took place right at the beginning of the encounter in Egypt. Exodus chapter five, verses one and two says, and after this presentation to Israel's leaders, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Let my people go so that they may hold a festival in my honor in the wilderness. And Pharaoh retorted, is that so? And who is the, is the Lord? <clears throat> Why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord and I will not let 
Israel go. You see, my brother, it was a clash of powers that started right here. <clears throat> Who is God? Jehovah. Pharaoh was considered to be a God. So who is this God that I should obey him? What is your God to me? What authority has he over me? He is at best your God, not mine. <clears throat> I acknowledge him not. He is not within the range of my pantheon. So I don't need to obey him. But we know how the story ended. The Bible tells us that Pharaoh and his people begged the children of Israel to leave Israel. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 12 and verse 33 says, and all the Egyptians urged the people of Israel to get out of the land as quickly as possible. For they thought, we will all die. Pharaoh even got to know who God is because Exodus 12 and verse 32 tells us, he says, take your flocks and herds, as you said, and be gone. Go, but bless me as you leave. What time did he beg them to leave? Exodus 12, verse 29, the first part, and 31 says, At midnight, and at midnight, Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron during the night. And he says, Get out, he ordered. Leave my people and take the rest of the Israelites with you. Go and worship the Lord as you have requested. And so my brother and the children of Israel were on their way. But like many of us, Pharaoh quickly forget and he took up the challenge again. Uh, this time he not only lost the challenge, but his life also. I want us to understand that no matter what the enemy try, God will always be victorious. But during the progress, before we can sing the victory song, there will be challenges. The song says, it's not an easy road. We're traveling to heaven for many other thorns on the way. It's not an easy road, but the Savior is with us. His presence gives us joy every day. No, no. It's not an easy one. No, no, it's not an easy one. But Jesus walks beside me and brightens the journey and lightens every hair, Lord. Because the I am, that I am was with Israel, they were able to sing the victory song that is mentioned in Exodus 15. And after that, the children of Israel traveled until they reached the wilderness near the mountain of God. And Exodus 18 and verse 5 says, God had promised that he would bring Moses and the people back to worship him, according to Exodus 3 and verse 12. Uh, let me hasten to say here that God is true to his promises and he will never fail 
he never fails. It's at this time that Moses' family is reunited with him. Jeshua said something here on meeting Moses again. Exodus 18 and verse 1 says, Now Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel, his people. Now that Jehovah, how that Jehovah had brought Israel out of Egypt, is this important? Yes, he had not gotten the full story, but had gotten enough to make him inquire and want to get more. Exodus 18 and verse 8 says that Moses told him everything that took place. And Moses told his father-in-law all that Jehovah had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the travail that had come upon them by the way, and how Jehovah had delivered them. Why was Jethro so interested in this story? Verse 1 of Exodus 18 tells us that he was a high priest in Midian. The Midianites were the descendants of Abraham by Keturah, according to Genesis 25 and verse, tw and verse 2. These people were idol worshippers. So Jethro must have gone through a rough time. He must have heard sayings like, how can you be worshipping a wee God? One that cannot deliver his people. Look at all those who say that they are worshipping him. They are in slavery. It's a waste of time. You need to join us. I want to ask here, brethren, can anyone here identify with Jethro? Have you ever been mocked because you worship God on a Saturday? Have you ever been told that you are worshiping a dead God going to church when Jesus is in the tomb? Then you know what Jethro was going through. You know what it means to go against the popular way. As far as it goes, there was no power on earth that could have delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. Uh, Jethro said he heard what God did for Israel and he wanted the full and true story from Moses. As we will say, he wants it from the horse's mouth. Have God done anything for you? Bible commentary, the SDA Bible commentary, 1099 and paragraph 2 says, Jethro was singled out from the darkness of the Gentile world to reveal the principles of heaven. How about you, my brother? Are you singled out by God for good work? Exodus 18 and verse 9, and Jethro rejoiced are for all the goodness which Jehovah had done to Israel, in that he had delivered them out of the hands of the Egyptians. Jethro delighted when he heard all the good things the Lord had done for Israel as he rescued them from the hands of the Egyptians. Look at the excitement which built up Watch the build up. And Jethro said, Blessed be Jehovah, who has delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians and out of the hands of Pharaoh, who has delivered the people from under the hands of the Egyptians. He's building up, he's bubbling here, my brother. He can now shout. And so he shouts in verse 11, Now I know that Jehovah is greater than all gods. Yeah, in all things, in the thing wherein they dealt proudly against them. He was so happy that he had a thanksgiving service. Verse 12 tells us, after this, 
after his visit, he, he had a meeting and he praised God. He offered sacrifices. And after this, he, this visit, Jethro must have left the camp singing, would you be free from your burden of sin? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you, O oh, evil, a victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. Jethro must have went along, skipping, jumping, singing, shouting to God. There is power in the blood, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. These words must have had new meaning for Jethro, for he can now rejoice and boast, now I know. The words of the song meant a lot for Peter. In Acts chapter 12, verses 1 to 11, we find Peter in a similar situation. Herod Agrippa I was in power. He started to kill the members of the church. He started with the leaders. He had James killed. Take a look at what the Bible says in verse 3 of Acts 12. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. And those were the days of unleavened bread. When God's people are being ridiculed and killed, the enemy will always be happy. But I want to assure you that God will always come to the rescue. I want to assure you, my brother, that our God is a rescuing God. Psalms 46 and verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And verse 7 says, Jehovah of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Can I hear somebody say amen out there? He then grabbed Peter to kill him as well. He put him in prison. The death sentence was passed on Peter. Notice verse 5 of Acts chapter 12. Peter therefore was kept in the prison, but prayer was made earnestly of the church unto God for him. The saints prayed. I want you to know, brother, that there was no earthly power that could have freed Peter. But when the saints prayed, it stirred heaven and moved God to action. Verse 6 made it clear that there wasn't any way that Peter could have escaped. But the book called to stand apart, page 27, paragraph 1 says, Prayer, I want to say again, my brethren, prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse. We are treasured the boundless resources of omnipotence. I want to say again, uh, this book says, prayer is the key in the hands of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse. We are treasured the boundless resources of omnipotence. Prayer moved heaven to send one angel who had more power than Herod and his entourage. Chains fell off, doors opened, and Peter walked out without any problems. Peter himself did not even realize what was going on. But when he came through, he said in verse 11, verse 11 says, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know, ah, catch this, my brethren, when God works for us, we are to acknowledge the power. And Peter says, now I know of a truth that the Lord had sent forth his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all 
the expectation of the people of the Jews. I want to say that no matter what problems we may find ourselves in, God can come to our rescue and will come to our rescue. Again, we find when God comes through for us, we cannot but otherwise say, now I know. We find another one saying these same words in John chapter nine from verse one onward. Is a story about a man who was blind from birth. Notice that while he was blind, there wasn't any problem. But when his prayer was answered, there were endless problems. Have you ever noticed that when people are going to the disco and the pubs and smoking, that it's okay? Everything is all right. But as soon as that same person decide, decide to make a change and accept Jesus, everything goes wrong. All oh, lots of people start to visit and to give advice. Everyone now knows, now seems to know and to have the best interest for that person. Even the parents of the blind man were afraid. I want to say thank God that uh, this man was able to stand up to all the pressure that was brought to be upon him. Uh, brethren, when God answers your prayer and bring deliverance, don't be afraid to stand up. The song says, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. It's you who knows what God have done for you. Stand like Jethro, stand like Peter, and stand like this man and say, in verses 24 and 25, he says, so they called a second time the man that was blind and said unto him, give glory to God. We know, they said, that this man is a sinner. He therefore, the man therefore answered, whether he is a sinner, I know not. Or catch this, catch this, my brother. For one thing I know, Ah, oh, this man is able to boast and says, one thing I know, he says, he do not know if he is a sinner, but one thing he knows, that wherein I was blind, now I can see. I want to say to us today, brethren, that when we were blind, we could not see, but when Jesus entered the picture, all of us can see. The Desire of Ages, page 37 and paragraph one says, sin had become a science and vice was consecrated as a part of religion. Rebellion had struck its roots deep into the heart and the hostility of man was most violent against heaven. It was demonstrated before the universe that apart from God, humanity could, be, could not be uplifted. A new element of life and power must be imparted by him who made the world." End of quote. I want to say when one is under the power of sin, it takes a power greater than sin to deliver so that we can say, now I know. Like Jethro, I can say, now I know that Jesus saves and delivers. I want to ask a question, is there someone here today who would like to say, now I know. Uh, Psalms 34 and verse one says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Is there such a one? We would like to pray for you. You can just raise your hands 
or indicate in the chart. Later is not promised to us. Now is the only time that we have. Uh, Second Corinthians 6 and verse 2 says, Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Uh, I'm admonishing us all to give Jesus a chance and see what he'll do for you. And I'm sure that you too will say, Now I know that Jesus saved. Uh, I want us to, I want to pray. And I'm going to ask Elder Griffith if he can just pray on behalf of all those who are indicating that they too want to say that now I know that Jesus saved. Elder, won't you please pray for us? Let me thank Father in heaven. Thank you so much for coming to save us. For knowing the desires of each and every one of us are. And so, Lord, as we have this desire to give ourselves to you one more time, we ask, Lord, that you will take us and that you will perform in us that miracle that you have performed all the time. I'm asking that you will accept each and every one of us. And where we are not quite clear in our mind, help us to recognize that you are able to bring us from whatever level of sin we may find ourselves in. We ask that you will help us to know for ourselves that we are able to trust you. And so, Father, we thank you for the message of hope that you have given to us this afternoon, one that will help us to church your words and to understand it more for ourselves. We thank you for the message and we thank you for the opportunity you've given to us to surrender ourselves one more time. Is our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right, you can unmute now and say hello. Just give me a few people. Amen. So if you can unmute. Amen. 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 Good Good message. Amen. Wonderful message. Okay, thank you. Right, we have heard it and we give God thanks. Thank you, Elder Willow. For your message of hope and encouragement. One to assure us that you that Jesus knows all about us. He knows our difficulties. He knows our problems. And he is able, able to solve them. So thank you very much for the message of assurance. To conclude, Wonderful message. Thank you. You know, the closest part of our service will use the hymn 511. I know whom I have believed. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not how this saving Keep that which I committed
Laborers with you. We want to thank you for speaking directly to us today, giving us the assurance that you are still in the saving business. Whatever problems we have, you said that there is nothing too hard for you to do. So help us to trust you and to depend upon you. We thank you for what you have been doing and what you are doing and will continue to do for us. I bless us all here now. May the message that we hear find lodgment down in the deep recesses of our minds and draw us closer to you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> 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 